good morning and welcome to St. Michael's. Please join us in our opening song, 531. Sing to the Mount, 531, verses 1 and 3. white stuff falling. What's it doing falling on the 14th of October, huh? <laughs> Somebody said Merry Christmas. It's a little early for that. But <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't stick. Let's hope we have a good crowd today for our Harvest Festival, and hopefully you can join us and be part of that celebration after Mass today. As you can see, we have our Sparks singing today. Last week it was the Flames, so now we have our elementary and middle school kids singing. We're grateful for them for sharing their talents today, so thank you guys for being part of liturgy. Yes, Peg, what else now? <laughs> thank you very much. Good to know. <laughs> today on this 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Jesus talks about wealth and eternal salvation. And so now as we prepare ourselves for this liturgy, we take a moment to pause and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you call us into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in faith. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for all your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Join now in the singing of our glory.
are helping with the various uh, liturgical roles and uh, other duties, ushering and so on. So we're grateful for having the fifth grade class uh, assisting us on liturgy. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And let us be seated now to hear God's word. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I prefer her to scepter and throne, in deep riches, nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her silver is to be accounted mire. Behold, health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all God things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man came up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus said again in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. In the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, thank you, young people, for making this Mass a little lively. Thank you. Appreciate it. No offense against the other people who came to the other masses. Anyway, in today's gospel, Jesus is really challenging the man who asks what he needs to do to, inter- to inherit eternal life. The man says he has kept all the commandments from his youth, and he probably was a very good Jew. He kept all the rituals. He probably, you know, donated 10% of his, his tithing to the, to the Jewish faith. He had possessions, which was really a sign that God was pleased in him. Actually, that's, a sign, that's kind of the, the belief that was then and probably is now, because if something goes wrong, I guess God is maybe punishing him. So anyway, in the tradition, Jewish tradition, he certainly would be in line for eternal life. Well, Jesus looks on him and perhaps he saw some potential 
in this man. Perhaps this guy could have been one of the apostles. Perhaps this guy could even maybe have written one of the, one of the gospels. Jesus challenges him. If he really wants to be his follower, his disciples, he should first of all sell all of his possessions, give the funds to the poor, and follow him. You know, our first reaction might be, come on, Jesus, this guy's doing pretty well. I mean, he's a good guy. But the man could not do that. He had many possessions. Then Jesus goes on to say in the gospel, it's easier for a rich man to pass through the eye of a needle than for them to enter the kingdom of God. That was another challenge, a very strong challenge. Richness was a sign of God's blessing to have possessions that God is pleased. In the second reading from Hebrews, we hear that the word of God cuts through like a double-edged sword, cuts through our lives. It certainly cut through the life of that man. Is the word of God cutting through our lives? What is Jesus asking of us? Well, I think we can pretty much say that we're, we're keeping the commandments. I mean, we're not evil people. You know, Jesus mentioned those, those commandments. You know, we don't go around killing people. I mean, that's just not in our DNA. But Jesus once said that if you unjustly are angry with your brother or sister, that is part of that commandment. You know, I get uncomfortable when I see injustice happening in our world. And I do admit that, I, that I'm angry, I was angry, when I see bishops moving personnel around after they have been accused justly about sexual abuse. And I do get angry when I see women that are degraded, abused, and disrespected. I had a wife, I have four daughters, four granddaughters. Yeah, I'm protective. Well, Jesus got angry when he cleared the money changers in the temple. Remember that time? So maybe justified anger is okay. You know, we don't commit adultery, although many times uh, adultery happens and marriages break up because of that. But you know, as I look around this congregation, there are many, many people who are living as couples who are very faithful to one another. So that's not a your problem. You know, we don't go around stealing, but are we honest all the time? When we go into the grocery store, perhaps, and we are charged a lower price than perhaps we should have been, do we say anything about that or we let that go? Or do we sometimes twist the facts around a little bit in our income taxes? Do we do that? I'm hoping the IRS is not around this morning. You know, we usually don't give false witnesses, except, of course, sometimes when rumors are spread. Have you ever said, I don't know for sure whether this is true or not, but, and you tell the rumor. We certainly don't intentionally defraud one another, but at times are we as honest as we could have been? You know, I remember the times sometimes when my wife would come home from the hairdresser and for you husbands, uh, I've learned that uh, the best thing to do is to say, dear, that looks very nice. Although sometimes you might think, <laughs> well, that's interesting. <laughs> and we certainly try to honor our parents, our mothers and fathers. We do honor them. Sometimes teenagers have a little bit of a problem to doing that. And some of the young people maybe are getting into that a little bit. Um, but I would say, um, having raised four teenagers, um, keep love going both ways. Is Jesus saying to us, okay, you've done a pretty good job. But there's, is there anything that you can do 
if you really want to be my follower. You know, I think sometimes maybe we suffer from some of the same distractions as the man did. You know, he depended on his wealth. Do we depend on our wealth? You know, we are the wealthiest nation in the world. We have been for some time. Are we using that wealth to try to eliminate the poverty in the world? Or are we satisfied with just using our own wealth for our own enjoyment? Perhaps we depend on such things as our work, or maybe the price of commodities, or our bank accounts. Do we give those things a priority rather than our family and our friends and our community? Perhaps sometimes we depend on our smartphones, our devices. This is for some of you young people. Maybe some of the older people don't have those things. That's probably a good thing. But sometimes those kind of things can be so distracting, distracting from our faith life. The word of God indeed is like a two-edged sword. It can cut right through our lives if we are listening. Do we have the wisdom call, called forth in the first reading to see what is really important in my life? Do we have the wisdom to trust more in God and not in the things that are distractions to us? Does Jesus see potential in us as he did in that man in the gospel? Today we come together to hear the word of God, have that word become part of our lives, and to receive the Eucharist to help us to live our lives a little bit better this coming week. If we rely only on ourselves or on the things that we have, I don't think we'll ever make it. Jesus said in the gospel, for human beings, it is impossible, but for God, all things are possible. Jesus says to us, come, follow me. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Because we know that, God's call, that God calls us to be his people, let us fervently pray that we may all heed his call. For Pope Francis, all the bishops and priests of the world, who work to spread the gospel message, may the Holy Spirit guide them always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an e increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, may our hearts be open to, 
to the call of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those who work in the fields and for a bountiful harvest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of St. Michael's for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions in our prayer basket and for the prayers we offer silently in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And together we pray the prayer for vocations found on the back of our missalettes. Lord of the harvest, your word finds a home in our hearts, calls us into community, and invites us to generous service of the human family. Blessed with courage and spirit, your priestly people, call the full participation in the one body of Christ. May many choose to respond in public service to your call, offered in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us be seated now for preparation of gifts.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, Saint Michael and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we are alive for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, and all the people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer a sign of that peace now to one another. Thank you.
Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
announcements. Just a reminder, immediately after Mass, we hope you'll head straight over to the Rosemond Parish Center for our Harvest Festival dinner today. They're serving uh, Staley's Chicken Dinner. Carryouts are available in the Parish Center. Uh, dinner tickets will be sold at the door. Uh, we also ask that you um, turn in your raffle tickets before the drawing and come visit the country store, the paddle wheel, and the cakewalk. So hopefully we'll have a successful dinner here this afternoon. This afternoon also here at St. Michael's Church, the Rosary for Life will be taking place from 1.30 to 2.30 uh, here in the church and all are welcome to be part of that. The uh, annual Life Chain uh, will be taking place two weeks from now on Sunday, October 28th from 1.30 to 2.30 at the Sorensen Equipment parking lot. Signs will be provi provided and those who cannot stand for the full hour are asked to bring their own lawn chair with them. And this past Tuesday evening, our finance and parish councils have decided to temporarily put on hold our stained glass window project. Uh, there are three reasons for this. One is that the finance council has approved the uh, coming of a building performance analyst to uh, look at the overall church, the stained glass windows, the roof, and all the entryways uh, to see how much heat we are actually losing and to uh, hear what... Uh, needs to be done for further action. So that's the first reason. Secondly, it has been brought to our attention that the roof of the church is starting to show some wear and tear. I was up there about seven years ago and it was looking pretty good, but we knew it was coming towards the end of its life. Uh, we think there's still about five plus years left, uh, but it is something that is gonna need some attention here in the very near future. And the third reason is that uh, if you read the paper on Friday, you know that the Harlan Community School Board is in the process of putting together a $28 million bond issue. I think that would be up for a uh, vote on uh, December 11th, if I read correctly. Co correctly. And uh, $28 million is a big chunk of money, and I know that's going to affect our parish finances, and I think it's going to make it extremely difficult for memorial contributions towards the stained glass windows. So we're going to sit tight, watch how things play out for the next uh, year or two or so, and then we'll bring back uh, the subject matter for further discussion and see if we're ready to proceed uh, with it at that time. So it's on hold indefinitely, but we'll keep our eyes and ears open and see how things play out in the foreseeable future. Let us stand and pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O oh Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go now to live the Gospel. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing 3.30, 6.30. Lead me, Lord, 6.30. Thank you. 